Hello everybody. Today I am starting module 11 and it is my first lecture. In this lecture I wish to discuss the response of a system subjected to uh, support excitation. Now sometimes it happens that uh, the structure or machine parts which are adequately supported but support has got excited. Due to this the forces are induced throughout the body of the structure or machine parts and therefore the uh, stresses are induced. So such type of uh, case happens in case of uh, earthquake motion uh, in the structure, multi-story building or other tall structures or any structure which are founded on the ground are affected by ground motion during earthquake. Other examples are when we move in a vehicle on a rough road, the, the roughness of the road excites the suspension system of the vehicle as a result, the passengers feel uh, the uh, jerking. So that is a common uh, phenomenon and it is the example of base excitation. So due to base displacement or uh, the force that is, uh, there is no force but due to displacement of the support or base it sometimes happens that the structure is dynamically excited and stresses are caused. So such example I will give uh, in this class. First I will discuss the concept with a single degree freedom system how the support excitation causes the force uh, in the structure and ultimately the dynamic stresses. Then we will discuss the case of a continuous system with an example of cantilever beam subjected to support excitation. Now let us understand how the support excitation induces the force in the dynamic system. Consider a single degree freedom system with mass m and spring constant k and damping c. The system is supported on a rigid base and the mass has a displacement x and the base or the ground has a displacement y. So you can see there is no force in the system. But let us see how to uh, analyze the system and how the forces are induced due to base motion. Now governing differential equation of motion can be written as mx double dot plus c x dot minus y dot. That is the relative velocity between the mass and the support. So this is x dot minus y dot into damping constant. So that gives you the damping force. Then k into x minus y that is the relative displacement of the spring end and therefore this force is the spring force. So ultimately the dynamic equilibrium of the forces that using the Newton's second law we can get this equation of motion and you can see if I transfer these two quantities c y dot plus k y dot in the right hand side then this represents the forcing function. So forcing function or exciting force is induced due to base motion that is the base displacement and base velocity. So here you can see because of the stiffness k that uh, gives a force in the uh, structure or mass and here also due to the damping constant c and velocity relative uh, the ground velocity y the force is induced. Now if I want to write this equation of motion in terms of relative displacement then I can take the relative displacement z is equal to x minus y. So in this equation of motion if I substitute this x is equal to z plus y. So m z double dot plus y double dot plus c this is z dot plus y dot 
and k will be z plus y equal to 0. So, in that case the equation of motion becomes m z double dot plus c z dot plus k z equal to minus m y double dot. You can see this. These forces are induced and here of course the relative velocity that we are substituting x dot minus y dot that can be written as only c into z dot. Similarly, the relative displacement x minus y can be simply written as x into z. So, the force that is induced is now minus m into y dot. So, m z double dot plus c z dot plus k z equal to minus m y double dot. So, this is the inertia force and sometimes in case of this uh, earthquake motion we take this type of equation which will be helpful because we record the ground acceleration. So, y dot is y double dot that is the ground acceleration is available and you can easily calculate this uh, relative displacement. Once we get the relative displacement, absolute displacement can be found as z plus y. So, now let us uh, give an illustration with an example of multi degree freedom system. Take a two story building, shear building with lump masses m1 and m2 and column has stiffness which can be represented by two column in one uh, story together represents two sp springs in parallel. So therefore the spring stiffness we can take for the first story as k1 and this uh, damping will be c1. Similarly for the second story column the stiffness will be k2 and damping c2 and the lump masses are m1 and m2. The masses of the floors, beams etc are lumped at the center of the uh, floors or in the a horizontal member and therefore we take it as m2. And the base is subjected to ground motion, the horizontal ground motion. So, this is the mathematical model of the two story uh, shear building and we have to analyze this ok. So, let us first find out the differential equation of motion. Consider the free body diagram of each mass the equation of motion can be written as suppose if I consider mass 1 that is m1 the spring force at this end will be k1 x1 minus y because the support has a displacement y. Similarly, damping force will be c1 x1 dot minus y dot and on the other end it will be uh, the spring force will be k2 x1 minus x2 and the damping force will be c2 x1 dot minus x2 dot. Now, if I write the differential equation of motion, let us write this the inertia force m1 x1 dot double dot plus c1 x1 dot minus y dot plus c2 x1 dot minus x2 dot plus k1 x1 minus y plus k2 x1 minus x2 equal to 0. Now come to the second mass. So, second mass is m2 and here the attachment point is uh, of this being is here only on the left face. So, the spring force is k2 x2 minus x1 and damping force is c2 x2 dot minus x1 dot. So, writing the equilibrium equation for this mass m2 we can write m2 x2 double dot plus c2 x2 dot minus x1 dot plus k2 x2 minus x1 equal to 0. So, two equation of motions we have found out. Now, if relative motion is considered, then let us assume z1 equal to x1 minus y and z2 is equal to x2 minus y. Then, uh, substituting this in this equation, 
since we have got z1 equal to x1 minus y we can write x1 equal to z1 plus y y is the displacement of the base so x1 relative to the base the motion of the masses relative motion of the masses is x1 minus y and x2 minus y so we can write x1 equal to z1 plus y and x2 is equal to z2 plus y now substituting this in this equation again we get this uh, you can see here x1 minus x2 is equal to z1 minus z2 so we here substitute all these quantities here uh, x1 double dot will be z1 double dot plus y double dot c1 x1 dot minus y1 dot will be x1 dot minus y dot and here k1 into x1 minus y1 so we can write here x1 minus y you can see here equal to z1 so here we can replace it z1 here z1 dot like that and c2 you can here in this equation you can write it this z1 dot minus z2 dot and here in this expression within the parenthesis it will become z1 minus z2 when i come to the second mass we can write the equation of motion m2 x2 double dot plus c2 x2 dot minus x1 dot plus k2 x2 minus x1 equal to 0 then in matrix form the equation can be written as m1 m2 that is it, it is a 2 degrees of freedom system so therefore it will be 2 by 2 uh, matrix all the mass stiffness and damping matrices will be 2 by 2 so writing this matrices m1 m2 this is the diagonal element and 0 0 are the other diagonal elements leading diagonal elements are m1 m2 and here z1 double dot z2 double dot are the acceleration terms relative acceleration we can say it plus c1 plus c2 minus c2 minus c2 c2 you can observe the symmetry of the damping matrix as well as symmetry of the stiffness matrix so that shows the correctness of uh, deriving the equation of motion so with this the vector velocity vector is z1 dot z2 dot is multiplied with the c matrix similarly with the stiffness matrix that is first element is uh, k1 plus k2 first row first column then in the first row second column is minus k2 then again due to symmetry it will be minus k2 and k2 and it is multiplied by the vector z1 z2 equal to minus y double dot into vector m1 m2 so you can see in each floor the ground motion is transferred and therefore each floor will be experiencing the ground motion and according to its stiffness and damping properties it will show its dynamic behavior now let us see when the base motion is given or when a system or a single degree freedom or even multi degree freedom or a continuous system is founded on a rigid base however the base is moving there are several causes that i have told you so in that case the base motion is transmitted to the main system that is the mass m now let us see how what is the percentage of motion or displacement that is transferred in this mass m so our aim is to find the transmissibility of the base motion now equation of motion in terms of relative velocity can be written as m z double dot plus c z dot plus k z equal to minus m y double dot so this is the equation of motion of the system let the motion of the base be harmonic so in this case y is equal to capital y e to the power i omega t capital y is the amplitude of this uh, mass and uh, omega is the driving frequency or frequency of the base excitation 
we assume that a harmonic excitation is applied. So therefore, we assume small z equal to capital Z e to the power i omega t minus phi. So there is a phase angle between the displacement, uh, the mass displacement and the base displacement. So therefore, a quantity of parameter phi is associated. Substituting this in the equation of motion and after simplifying, we, we are getting capital Z e to the power minus i phi bracket minus omega square m plus i c omega plus k equal to capital Y m omega square. So therefore, Z e to the power minus i phi equal to y into m omega square m omega square you can see here divided by this quantity minus omega square m plus i c omega plus k. Now we have taken a complex representation of the harmonic motion. So therefore we are getting the expression in terms of complex number. Now when we want to get the modulus of the displacement function, then we can absolute displacement. Capital X represents the absolute displacement. So capital X equal to Z into e to the power minus i phi plus y. y is the amplitude of the base displacement and capital Z is the amplitude of the, the relative amplitude of the mass displacement and this factor is associated because we consider the phase angle. Now simplifying this we can write y into m omega square divided by minus omega square m plus i c omega plus k plus 1. Then uh, this is a complex number so let us multiply it both sides first let us uh, further simplify so it will be k plus i c omega divided by k minus omega square m plus i c omega okay now transmissibility of the displacement is defined actually this ratio tr is equal to absolute displacement of the mass divided by absolute base displacement so tr equal to modulus capital X by capital Y equal to root over k square plus c omega square divided by k minus omega square m whole square plus c omega square. Now introducing this uh, parameter c equal to 2j omega n m and k is equal to m omega n square where omega n is the natural frequency of the uh, single degree freedom system and r is the frequency ratio that is the ratio of the driving frequency to the natural frequency then we get this tr equal to mod x by y equal to root over 1 plus 2 j r square divided by 1 minus r square whole square plus 2 j r square this is under root so whole expression is under root so this is the transmissibility coefficient. Now let us see how much motion is transmitted to the main mass. Uh, before that let us discuss what is phase angle. So phase angle of the displacement of the mass is given as j and this j we have to now evaluate. Now x is the, the absolute magnitude or the magnitude of the steady state displacement x of the base motion is k plus i c omega divided by k minus omega square m plus i c omega into y. Multiplying both numerator and denominator by k minus omega square m minus i c omega we get capital X equal to k minus omega square m minus i c omega into k plus i c omega divided by k minus omega square m whole square plus c omega whole square into y capital y and uh, after simplifying you can see that uh, term by term multiplication is carried out here and uh, after that we ultimately get capital x equal to 
k square plus c omega whole square minus m omega square k minus i m c omega cube divided by k minus omega square m whole square plus c omega square. So this expression can be written again in the form of a plus i b where a is the real part and b is the imaginary part. So here if I block this quantity this will be your real part and if I block this quantity leaving i this will be your imaginary part. So the complex number we can express in terms of uh, this a into i theta where capital A is the modulus and theta is the phase angle. So therefore we can write 10 xi equal to actually it will be b by a so we are writing m c cube divided by k into k minus m omega square plus c omega square. So this is the expression of this uh, uh, phase angle xi. Now let us see how this uh, base motion is transferred to the main mass. Now if I uh, draw a graph between the frequency ratio and this uh, the uh, ratio of the amplitude x capital X by capital Y for different damping starting from very low damping say 0 0.05 and uh, very high damping 0 0.7 we can get the different curve. So this curve is uh, the j is equal to 0 0.05 and it has a sharp peak because of low damping. Now as the damping increases, you can see the curves are becoming flatter and flatter. So here you can see all the curves passes through a common point that is uh, frequency uh, at common point 1 this is uh, ratio is 1 tr that is the tr transmissibility ratio tr and all the curves passes through a common point uh, that is tr equal to 1 corresponding to the frequency ratio root 2. So we therefore can easily understand that for reduction of motion we require omega by omega n because r is equal to omega by omega n should be greater than root 2 say in this case all are less than 1 which means the natural frequency of the system is less than root 2 omega. So this is the very important conclusion and useful for the design of structures against the base motion. Okay. Now sometimes we want to calculate the amount of force that is transmitted and this is specially required in vibration isolator. Now suppose a machine is uh, mounted on a rigid base and the mass of the machine is m and a exciting force f is applied and for the illustration purpose let us take f is equal to f naught sin omega t that is a harmonic force and the stiffness of the system is k and damping is c. Now we can see that this system give rise to a equation of motion mx double dot if x is the displacement of the mass plus cx dot plus kx equal to f naught sin omega t and we know that for that case the steady state amplitude this is the steady state amplitude steady state amplitude equal to f naught by k divided by root over 1 minus r square whole square plus 2 j r whole square. Now if I represent the forces in a vector diagram say this represents the spring force kx and we know that the uh, this velocity is uh, 90 degree with 90 degree phase with the displacement. So this we get the damping force C omega capital X and uh, inertia force is out of phase with the displacement. So we get M omega square into capital X 
and uh, now we complete this triangle. So this is the transmitted force. So transmitted force here will be say k into this x if the base is not moving k into x plus c into x dot. So that means this uh, in this triangle the magnitude of the transmitted force will be diagonal of this triangle. So according to Pythagoras theorem we get ft is equal to root over kx whole square plus c omega x whole square. So this is the transmitted force. Now after simplification we get that uh, introducing this parameter say c by omega m is equal to 2 j omega n and k is equal to m omega uh, omega n square. So we ultimately get ft is equal to k, uh, k capital X root over 1 plus 2 j omega by omega n whole square. So now we can get it very easily because uh, this x that we have obtained earlier we now substitute it here and therefore after simplifying we get k into f0 by k divided by root over 1 minus r square whole square plus 2 j r whole square into root over 1 plus 2 j omega by omega n square omega by omega n is nothing but r. Hence the force transmittivity ratio will be Ft by F0 because F0 is the force that is applied and Ft is the transmitted force. Again we get the same expression that we obtained earlier for the displacement transmissibility. So force transmissibility is becoming root over 1 plus 2 j r whole square divided by 1 minus r square whole square plus 2 j r whole square. So this is the force transmissibility. Force transmissibility. Now let us uh, give an example of continuous system. So we take a cantilever beam which has a fixed base and let the base be excited. So base is having a displacement uh, y, ys. So support has a displacement ys. So ys is here the support displacement and uh, ybxt is the elastic deformation of the beam. So total displacement will be yxt at any time instant at any location will be yst plus ybxt. The equation of motion of the beam can be written as if E is the modulus of elasticity, I is the second moment of area, then EI is the flexural rigidity of the beam and C is the damping per unit length, M is the mass per unit length. So the motion can be described by this differential equation EI del 4y by del x4 plus c into del y by del t plus m del square y by del t square equal to 0. Substituting the absolute displacement y x t and transferring some quantities in the right hand side we get e i del to the power 4 into y s plus y b divided by del x to the power 4 into c del by del into y s plus y b divided by del t plus m del square y s plus y b divided by del t square equal to 0. So this is the equation of motion in terms of absolute displacement decomposing into two parts one is displacement is decomposed into two parts one is the support motion and one is the beam elastic deformation. So now writing this and separating this base motion on the right hand side we can now write ei del to the power 4 yb y subscript b represents the elastic motion of the beam divided by del x to the power 4 plus c del yb divided by del t plus m del square yb by 
del t square equal to minus c y dot s minus m y double dot s. So, this term you can see is transferred as a right hand side and depends on the, the damping of the beam and also mass of the beam as well as the support motion characteristic. So, support velocity and acceleration are coming here. So, the right hand side of this expression can be expressed as a distributed force over the length of the beam and it is equal to f x t, f is a function of x and t. So, therefore, the elastic motion of the beam is described by the differential equation E i del 4 y b divided by del x to the power 4 plus c del y b by del t plus m del square y b by del t square equal to f x t in which f x t equal to minus c y dot s plus m y double dot s. So, minus sign we have taken common and we have written this as a, a disturbing force on the beam distributed along the length. Now, let us see using the mode superposition technique we can write the beam elastic deformation as the summation of that mode into generalized coordinate and it has to be summed over infinite number of modes. So, k is equal to 1 to infinity we have written as the index of the summation and inside this phi k is a function of x into eta k t where eta k t is the generalized coordinate. Now, substituting this in the equation of motion multiplying both sides by another mode say phi n x and integrating over the length of the beam using orthogonality condition we get the discretized equation of the beam motion as eta i double dot t plus 2 xi i omega i eta dot i t plus omega i square eta i t equal to q i t i is equal to 1 to up to infinity where the generalized force q i is given as q i equal to minus 0 to l 2 xi i omega i y dot s phi i x dx plus 0 to l y double dot s phi i x into dx. So, this is the generalized force. Okay. Let the base excitation be a sinusoidal function given by y s equal to y naught sin omega t. So, q i equal to minus 2 xi i omega i into omega y naught cos omega t integration 0 to l phi i x dx plus omega square y naught sin omega t into phi i x and integration limit is 0 to l. So, you can see this term that knowing the mode shape function and mode shape is a function of x and when it is integrated in the limit 0 to l it becomes a constant. So, therefore, you can see that uh, the generalized force can be represented as two harmonic components and multiplier is a constant u1 i and u2 i where u1 i equal to minus 2 xi i omega i omega. Wh what is xi i? xi i is the model damping ratio and omega i is the ith natural frequency of the beam and omega is the driving frequency or exciting frequency. Integration 0 to l phi i x dx and y naught. Y naught is the amplitude of the base motion. Now, you can see this if I take y naught here, this becomes a constant quantity u 1 i. Similarly, u 2 i equal to omega square y naught integration 0 to l phi i x dx. Okay. So, this uh, quantity can be written that is uh, if I want to get this uh, write it in a single uh, harmonic function then it will be sin omega t minus phi where phi is the phase angle and u i is the amplitude. So, u i is given by root over 
u1 i square plus u2 i square tan phi is equal to u1 i divided by u2 i where phi x is equal to a1 cos hyperbolic lambda x plus cos lambda x plus alpha sin hyperbolic lambda x plus sin lambda x and alpha is equal to minus cos hyperbolic lambda l minus cos lambda l divided by sin hyperbolic lambda l minus sin lambda l. So this is the constant alpha. Okay. Now steady state amplitude of the displacement of generalized coordinate now can be written as eta i equal to u i divided by omega i square into 1 divided by root over 1 minus r i square whole square plus 2 j i i r i square. Hence we can write maximum displacement occurs at x is equal to l because at the free end of the cantilever the maximum displacement occurs. So therefore we can write the maximum displacement amplitude this x is equal to l as summation i is equal to 1 to infinity u i divided by omega i square into phi i l divided by root over 1 minus r i square whole square plus 2 j i i r i square. r i is the frequency ratio and phi i is the mode shape function at x is equal to l. Then total displacement of the beam is given by y capital Y equal to y naught plus y b l. y naught is the amplitude of the base motion and y b l is the, the amplitude of the steady state motion of the beam. Okay. Now having understood this let us uh, illustrate this with a numerical example. However you can see the mode shape of the cantilever beam is not a simple function just as your sin and cosine function. But again the mode shapes are orthogonal in case of cantilever beam also. So therefore we take approximate mode shape function and approximate frequency to solve the problem and therefore we will consider only the fundamental mode. Now you know that in earlier classes when we discussed the approximate method we found that Rayleigh's method gives a approximate frequency of the fundamental vibration and uh, this uh, function we have taken that we tried with a in a Rayleigh's method. So here in this cantilever beam say so length is L and length is in a numerical data that is length is taken as 1 meter and uh, the phi x that is the mode shape function of the cantilever in the first mode. First mode is a function of x and it is written as phi is equal to x square. Only one mode is taken and this function you can see it satisfies the geometric boundary condition at fixed n but free n the boundary conditions are not satisfied. Okay. So uh, the equation of motion neglecting damping is written as m eta double dot uh, as a function of time k eta t equal to q t. Now m is the mass generalized mass is equal to m phi square dx 0 to l and after putting this phi is equal to x square and integrating we get ml to the power 5 divided by 5. k is the generalized stiffness and it is found ei double derivative of phi square then integrating this product from uh, in limit 0 to l dx we are getting 4 ei l. Given the support excitation yst equal to y naught sin omega t and ei by ml to the power 4 equal to 80 this data we have taken. We are required to find the absolute displacement at steady state condition at the free n and therefore we can find the transmissibility ratio. So take the diving frequency as 31.4 radian per second and y naught is equal to the base displacement is equal to 1 centimeter that is 0 0.01 meter and l is equal to 1 meter. Okay. So let us solve this problem. 
So equation of motion can be now written ml to the power 5 divided by 5 that is the generalized mass into eta double dot t plus 4 ei l that is the generalized stiffness eta t equal to m omega square y naught l cube by 3 into sin omega t. This is the generalized force. How you find the generalized force? Generalized force is found as q is equal to minus base motion is given and due to base motion that is m y s so y s uh, this double dot is coming and this d x 0 to l and with this the mode shape function phi x will be associated. So substituting this uh, y double dot s you know this m omega square and sin omega t will come and then we have to integrate this function for the mode shape. So therefore we are getting this generalized force as minus m omega square y naught of course the y naught will come uh, y naught will be coming here because the y s is equal to y naught into sin omega t. So uh, the generalized force now becomes this. It is a time dependent force minus m omega square y naught l to the power cube divided by 3 sin omega t. Now dividing both sides by m l to the power 5 divided by 5 we get eta double dot t plus 20 e i divided by m l to the power 4 eta t equal to minus 5 omega square y naught divided by 3 l square sin omega t. Now substituting the value of e i by m l to the power 4 as 8 t we get now eta double dot t plus 1600 eta t equal to 5 into 31.4 square into 0 0.01 divided by 3 into 1 square sin omega t. So eta double dot t is equal to 1600 eta t minus 16.43 sin 31.40. Now frequency ratio is omega by omega n is 0.785. Hence we get this eta double dot t plus 1600 eta t equal to minus 16.43 sin 31.4 small t that is the time. So steady state amplitude for this uh, forcing function now can be written as 16.43 divided by 1600 into 1 divided by you can see in absence of damping we can simply write 1 divided by 1 minus 0.785 square. What is this? This is nothing but frequency ratio r. So after calculating this the steady state amplitude of the generalized coordinate becomes 0 0.026. Now at phi n the steady state amplitude will be phi l. So if l is equal to 1 then again this phi at 1 meter is equal to 1. So this yb 1 m is equal to 0 0.026 m meter. Hence total displacement amplitude is 0 0.01 plus 0 0.026 equal to 0 0.036 meter. Hence we get the transmissibility coefficient or transmissibility ratio at the free end is 0 0.036 divided by 0 0.01 this is the base motion equal to 3.6 and here you can see that omega by omega n is less than point uh, root 2. So therefore the amplification of the displacement occurs and if it is uh, greater than root 2 then of course the reduction of uh, motion occurs, base motion will occur at the main mass. Okay. So let us summarize today's lecture. In this lecture the response of continuous system to base excitation was discussed. However, before going detail into continuous system, we discussed the formulation for single degree freedom and multi degree freedom discrete system. Motion transmissibility and force transmissibility of single degree freedom are discussed 
a numerical example of cantilever beam subjected to support excitation has been solved. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.